Raphael Devers returns to the lineup as the Red Sox get a big win over the Guardians on Wednesday. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlba, former ESPN social media associate, and also currently the host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. And honestly, who doesn't love free? Might as well take advantage of that, right? So start your day off the right way with Lockdown Red Sox. I am here for you going through all the same emotions that you are. If this team makes you happy, then they make me happy too. If they make you sad, they also make me sad. This is the show for you if your emotions are completely determined by how the Boston Red Sox do. So I am here for you. Lockdown is your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Lockdown Red Sox. And it certainly is a happy Thursday for Red Sox fans. I mean, what a game for this team on Wednesday night in Cleveland. Where has this offense been? I mean, I certainly knew that potential was there for them to have that kind of offensive display. But, I mean, I wish it was more consistent because this offense has been very off and on all season long. I mean, we just saw it on Tuesday night with lots of strikeouts, the Red Sox not generating a lot of hits and not getting a lot of guys on base. And the offense pretty much was just going through the motions for a lot of the game on Tuesday. And then all of a sudden on Wednesday night, they faced Carlos Carrasco, who actually pitched very well against them in Boston earlier this season. So they kind of jumped on him and it really started from the get-go from the first inning. The Red Sox just had him wrapped behind their finger and there was no going back as this team was just really having fun and enjoying themselves on offense. Lots of different players getting involved, including Rafael Devers, who was finally back in the lineup after experiencing some soreness and resting and being out of the lineup for about a week. Alex Cora had mentioned that they wanted to just take it day by day and evaluate how he was feeling and not rush him back, which I 100% agree with. It's too early in the season now to rush a player back from something that's injury related. You'd rather take the time that he needs to make sure he gets fully healthy before returning him to the lineup. So I was glad that the Red Sox did that. Finally got the go-ahead and was back in the lineup on Wednesday night. I know he had wanted to return to the lineup well before that, but props to the Red Sox for making the decision they did because, I mean, what an impact he made in his first game back in the lineup. I mean, it certainly goes to show that Rafael Devers was missed. He had a three-hit night, went three for four, absolutely crushed a home run drove in two runs and also drew a walk in an at bat. He did strike out once, but that completely didn't matter because overall he was getting on base the majority of the time that he was at the plate. And it really just sends a message that Devers was desperately needed in this lineup. I mean, he was struggling at the plate prior to his rest days. He was batting just 188 when he stopped playing for quite a few consecutive games. And then his batting average jumped up to 231 after his performance on Wednesday night. And to me, because he was struggling a lot at the plate prior to that, I think this whole resting period ended up working wonders for him. Obviously, there was something bothering him physically when he was 
out there in previous games and it wasn't really fully addressed. So I think he was just trying to push through some pain that he had early on in the season and it was impacting how he performed offensively because he went out there on Wednesday night and just crushed the ball, looked completely confident and just ready to be back out there and happy to be back out there. And I've said multiple times before the season started and even into the season that I expect big things from him this year. I think it's going to be a big season for Raphael Devers at the plate in that he just signed that monster contract recently. He's in the first year of that contract now. He really wants to make a splash, wants to make an impact as that guy who is now the team leader. He's becoming more vocal in terms of expressing how he feels about certain things related to the Red Sox and the organization. And he's acting like the face of the franchise because honestly, at this point, he is. And I really like the fact that he's been brutally honest even during the offseason about how he felt like the team wasn't really addressing its holes and its needs during the offseason. And then going into the season, just expressing how he feels about this team. He did say in his postgame press conference on Wednesday that he feels like this Red Sox team can do damage and can be very competitive. And he said it's very telling that they've still found a way to win games despite all the injuries, which is true. I mean, they've had a great road trip so far. They swept the Pirates at PNC, which, by the way, is a beautiful ballpark. If you haven't been, I highly recommend you checking it out. Beautiful place. But so the Red Sox and PNC Park are good friends because the Red Sox enjoyed playing baseball there, obviously, and swept the home team over there. And then so far, they're one and one in this series against the Guardians. And I felt like this was definitely needed for them after a tough homestand because now they've secured a winning record on the road trip because they do return home over the weekend to face the Cubs. So after what was a tough homestand and them not winning a lot of games, I felt like they really needed this. And also, I think there was a lot of discouragement when Devers had to sit out and wasn't in the lineup because when the face of your franchise can't play, it's tough. There's been a lot of things that have had to be compensated for, like Bobby Dahlbeck having to play first base or third base a lot and the fact that he really can't hit super effectively. He did get a hit in Wednesday night's game. Breaking news, everybody. I mean, Bobby Dahlbeck added to the hitting parade on Wednesday night. It's a miracle, I know. But in general, he really can't hit. And that's why people remember when he gets a base hit because it really doesn't happen very often. But you're putting guys in situations that you wouldn't ideally want to put them in. Like the Red Sox obviously didn't go into this season with the idea of Pablo Reyes and Bobby Dahlbeck playing the corner infield positions. They just didn't have that in mind. The idea was that they had Casas Endeavors in those positions. Then both of which were sitting out. I mean, Casas is on the injured list for likely a longer period of time. Devers luckily is back now, but that completely changes the team chemistry on the field based on who's present and who's not. So that was definitely a factor in them struggling on the homestand. And I think mentally, if you struggle that much at home, then you want to go into the next road trip and just start winning some baseball games. And it can take a toll on a team mentally if they're not winning games when they're playing at home. So then they went back on the road, knew that Tyler O'Neill and Raphael Devers were going to be coming back into the lineup. And I think that alone was a lifesaver for this team, just knowing that a couple of their key guys are coming back. And Devers being back in the lineup just makes everything work more. Him hitting means a lot of times the rest of the lineup is going to hit. And that's exactly how it went on Wednesday. Devers was mashing, and then it allowed other guys to mash, and it was just a big chain reaction of guys coming through and delivering. And it was really great to see that because this is the offense that, if the Red Sox stick with, is going to be competitive. And we want competitiveness. We want a team that can put up a fight against the best teams in the American League, especially with how well the pitching has been doing overall and the fact that the Red Sox as a starting pitching rotation are one of the best in baseball. You don't want to ruin that with an offense that can't provide run support. So I was really happy to see that the Red Sox were hitting and the offense really came to life. And I do 
like to credit some of that to Devers being back and him having the opportunity to really showcase what he can do in the lineup again and be the player that we all want him to be. I think it was easy for people to lose patience with Devers when the season started, but clearly there was some pain there. And now that he's been able to rest for a while, look what he did when he came back into the lineup. So that's why I'm expecting a lot of big things moving forward from him this season. And I'm just excited to see him really lead this team both on and off the field because this is definitely his time now. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about another couple guys that had a really big game on Wednesday night and have been on an absolute roll for the Red Sox offense. Why could this be a game changer? You'll find out next. I know how stressful it can be to find a good life insurance policy. It's such an important safety net for your family, but trying to find the right policy on your own sometimes can be both time consuming and overwhelming. That's why Policy Genius is here to help you find the right plan for you. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. It's really convenient and time saving because it'll actually help you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. So it'll really help the process be a lot less overwhelming. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. It really is a great way to eliminate some stress. So check out Policy Genius today. Also, if you have any sort of a competitive side, which I know I do, there's a game that's absolutely perfect for you. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches in the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Proceed with caution because you'll become addicted if you do use it, but it's also a great time, so I highly recommend checking it out. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you-can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Sports Today really will keep you caught up in everything going on in sports, so make sure that you subscribe to that today. The Boston Red Sox had a very good 8 to nothing shutout win against the Cleveland Guardians on Wednesday, and that was primarily due to the fact that everybody was working together to get the result they wanted. Isn't it great when everything comes together? The momentum was absolutely there because of Rafael Devers being back in the lineup and the excitement of having him return. That's always a plus, but... Everybody was hitting. So many different guys were getting involved in the offense. And it was really great to see because it helps give you a different perspective of what this offense really can do when they're performing at their best. They had 16 hits overall as a team and scored eight runs. And then they also hit three home runs. I mean, talk about this team and how many home runs they've hit this year. 
I didn't expect that. The Red Sox have never really been a team that comes with a ton of power and a ton of home run hitters, but they've been hitting a lot of them this year, and they added three more to that total on Wednesday night. They did strike out eight times. The swing and misses have been a bit of a problem for this team as they were in double digits and strikeouts on Tuesday night, so that's obviously not very good. So they do have to watch the swings and misses, try to cut those down a little bit, but overall, I was very happy with the offensive performance, and one player who just continues to absolutely mash is Connor Wong he went four for four on the day drove in three runs and hit two home runs I mean this guy is absolutely mashing he's up to a 370 batting average on the season 386 on base percentage and 667 slugging he was hitting over 300 prior to this game what a lot of people don't realize is that connor wong has not dipped below a 300 batting average all season long he's been consistently an over 300 hitter and that is something that he's kind of quietly doing he's been one of the best hitters on the team this year and i don't know what it is that they were able to find with him during the off season but he fixed something and he looks so much more confident at the plate he's crushing baseballs two home runs in one night i mean i was excited for the first one that first one barely got over the fence and i said wow connor wong let's go another home run for him but then when he crushed that second one i was like wow this guy keeps on hitting and it's absolutely unbelievable that he had the performance that he had on wednesday because I would never have thought that at this point in the season, I'd be sitting here talking about Connor Wong as one of the best and most consistent hitters in this Red Sox lineup. Four for four on the night. And that alone is an absolute game changer for the Red Sox because when you can say the name of a player who you didn't expect to have a big season and is having a big season, that's already a plus to the guys that you already expected and know will have a good season, like Raphael Devers, Jaron Duran, Tristan Casas. Adding somebody like Connor Wong to the mix of names that you're relying on consistently is huge for the offense and the overall offensive productivity because last year Connor Wong was decent at the plate, but not nearly as good as he is right now. And if he can keep this up, he is a fantastic number two catcher option to have behind Kyle Teal when he does get called up eventually. And even when Kyle Teal first gets called up, there might be a little bit of an adjustment period getting used to playing in the majors. So Connor Wong might be the number one starting catcher for a while. But he's really making a case for why he deserves to still be one of the two primary catchers for this team moving forward. I mean, his batting average was a 382 on April 17th. It's not really fully being talked about enough how well he's actually been hitting. His plate approach is a lot different. He's attacking the strike zone a lot, and he's not afraid to really swing for the fences or swing for hits and try to get on base. And I love that about Wong. Does he make base running blunders here and there? Yes, and it drives me absolutely nuts. But last year, his strength was certainly his arm and his ability to throw out potential base stealers at second base, and he was a good defensive catcher overall. But his offense now being added to that could make him a very good, well-rounded overall catcher. He just needs to continue to show consistency and continue to make those nice defensive plays that we saw a lot of from him last year. Then we're looking at a situation where we have a catcher who has completely surprised everybody in terms of how well he's performed this year and is a great person to have in that catching tandem moving forward. So I'm very impressed with Connor Wong and his ability to continue to keep hitting. And another player who had another impressive performance on Wednesday night and continues to have performances like that is Willier Abreu. I mean, I don't know what he's figured out lately, but he went four for five on Wednesday night. Four hits, drove in one run. I mean... He's been hitting very well lately. He's up to 322 as his batting average on the season with a 412 on base percentage and 512 slugging. And the difference really for him is that on April 16th, literally like a little over a week ago, he was batting 188. And then 176 on April 17th and 184 on April 18th. So somewhere in the last week, he's really gotten hot at the plate 
and jumped up that batting average very quickly. I mean, even from April 23rd to April 24th, he went from a 278 batting average to a 322 because of the four hits that he collected on Wednesday night. So naturally, that's going to boost his batting average a lot. But Willier Abreu is the type of player who I saw had potential when he was called up in September of last year. And he was able to start to showcase what he can do at the major league level. But it was such a small sample size, so we couldn't really draw the conclusion about what type of player he was going to be, if he was going to be able to make that much of an impact on this Red Sox team moving forward. And then he jumps in there this year, and sure enough, he is definitely making a pretty quick impact. So that's really nice to see. I think there was... A confidence thing at the beginning he needed to gain some confidence and feel like he could perform on the big stage which was major league baseball and be able to transition and find himself getting acclimated this season and figuring out what he needs to do to set him up to be successful and it was really truly great to see the way that he was in good spirits he was so excited when he was making contact with these balls and it's just a great way to see that he can do a lot of different things out there. And I saw that potential again last year. He hit very well in that last month of the season last year. But I said, let's see if this carries over. And it certainly is. And it makes you wonder, you know, what happens with the Red Sox outfield situation? Sadam Rafaela has been struggling overall at the plate Although he went two for four with an RBI and he did crush a double on a very good at bat by him. And that was awesome to see too, because we really need Rafaela to get going at the plate. He's been kind of lost and it's been tough to see, but he's been good for playing shortstop because the Red Sox are thin on infielders right now because of the injuries and Instead of platooning guys like David Hamilton and Emmanuel Valdez and Pablo Reyes at shortstop and expecting them all to adapt to that and continue to play that, they decided to play Rafaela at shortstop. And it's worked out very well defensively. Lots of more seamless defense and turning double plays more effectively and being able to feel more confident in what they're doing and have the ability to just actually record the outs that they need to record and not mess up as many routine plays so that's been good defensively but at the plate he's been struggling so what do the Red Sox do I'm hard pressed to feel like they would want to get rid of Rafaela just because of his versatility and everything he could do out there even if he is struggling a little bit more offensively so it'd be interesting to see how they handle that situation with him but if they are looking to move an outfielder, now could be the time to sell Willier Abreu high when his value is very high. If they are looking to move on from one of their current outfielders and maybe get some pitching in return, I think there's definitely some teams that would go after Abreu. And if the Red Sox are not really looking like they're in contention closer to the trade deadline and Abreu is still playing the way he is now, I would not be surprised if the Red Sox try to shop him and move him around somewhere so that he could go to another team where he could be effective that desperately needs an outfielder and the Red Sox could get some strong pitching arms. So that's something for the Red Sox to consider, but he does need to maintain this consistency and be able to continue to stay hot at the plate. I still am looking for, is this just a streak? Is he a streaky hitter who goes on these hot streaks and then kind of falls back into this level of being average and not really making as much contact because very early on in the season he was struggling so I'm watching for can he maintain this level of consistency or is it streaks does he go in waves where he's hitting well and then not hit so well because then we can't really rely on him as much for the rest of this season moving forward but if we can rely on Abreu in the offense that's huge because his defense is very good made a couple very nice plays again in the outfield on Wednesday night so defensively he's looked very good in the outfield and that's been beneficial to the Red Sox for sure so if he can maintain this level of offense that he's been hitting at that's going to make this Red Sox lineup deadly to some opposing pitchers because there are a lot of guys in this lineup who can really hit right now and consistency is what keeps popping into my head can they maintain that are they really the types of hitters who can stay continuing to hit as much as they have been? 
That's something that we're going to find out as the season progresses. But coming up, I'm going to be talking about Cooper Criswell and the start he made on the mound on Wednesday night. And it might be a pleasant surprise to you. If you're looking for a fun way to play daily fantasy sports, look no further than prize picks. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. PrizePix even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For baseball games, if you have a player who registers two plate appearances or less, PrizePix will have your back and not count that as a loss. Testing my skills on prize picks this baseball season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $100 with just a few taps. Download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 if you use code LOCKDOWNMLB. It really is a great deal, and it's a great way to make some money. And who doesn't want to make money? So definitely take advantage of that today. Also take advantage of Locked On Sports today as we as a network have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is great for Locked On because nobody else has a 24-7 sports streaming channel. So if you're looking to stay caught up in all things going on in sports without having to worry about scrolling through Twitter... That absolutely is the place for you. So subscribe to Locked On Sports today. Not only did the Boston Red Sox have a fantastic night offensively on Wednesday night against the Guardians, they certainly did bring the bats, but the pitching also did their job as well as it was a shutout outing. And Cooper Criswell started the game for the Red Sox, went five innings, gave up just three hits and no earned runs, and also struck out three. And then Joely Rodriguez came in, and I'm going to be honest, I was not thrilled when I saw him come up to the mound. And I was saying, the Red Sox have a pretty big lead right now. Is this enough of a lead to where Joely can manage and not blow it? And sure enough, that ended up being the case because he pitched two innings, just gave up one hit, no runs, and struck out one. And he honestly looked very good. This was the best I've seen him pitch all season long. So he was definitely locked in for those two innings. And then Zach Kelly pitched the last two innings, two innings, zero earned runs, and struck out three. So overall, it was a very good start by Cooper Criswell and just a very good outing by the pitchers in general. And Criswell, I was definitely concerned about because he was somebody who the Red Sox were talking about being a starter potentially before the season started, being at the majors and getting that fifth starting spot when they still were deciding between him, Garrett Whitlock and Tanner Houck. But then they decided they were going to start him in AAA because they wanted to have Houck and Whitlock be in the starting rotation. So then he went to AAA and then got called up because of yet another pitching injury when Nick Pavetta went down. And he honestly looked very good on Wednesday night. Prior to that, he did have a 426 ERA before this start and a 450 ERA before that. He jumped his ERA down to 2.38 after the start on Wednesday night because of the fact that he pitched five complete innings all very solid innings, barely gave up much at all, and just had complete control for the entire outing. So that was really nice to see from somebody who the Red Sox are really rolling the dice on as being part of the rotation here, somebody who they kind of brought up because they felt like they were left with no other choice due to all of the injuries that they do have. So definitely a pitcher they rolled the dice on, but I really liked what I saw from him on Wednesday. And I'm going to bring up this word again because it goes with the theme of the night, which is consistency. 
if the Red Sox consistently can have similar performances to what they had on Wednesday, they can be a competitive team. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win eight to nothing every night or they're going to record as many hits as they did on Wednesday night because that would be a crazy thing to ask of any team with how long the season is. But I'm saying if they can get a quality start the majority of the time from all of their starting pitchers and the offense is starting to click when it needs to, I mean, they could be a tough team to beat. And we saw it against a good Cleveland team that, by the way, is very good at home. They don't lose many games at home. So it's very telling that the Red Sox were able to go in there and do what they did. And, I mean, no offense to them, but smoke them. So that was a good sign. And Chris Bell looked very good, had control, and was able to shut down the Guardians hitters. They were not able to figure him out, and it was great to see. And I did mention Zach Kelly, who is a pitcher who dealt with a lot of injury last year, but was primarily pitching in AAA, spent some time being called up, had his opportunities here and there to pitch in the majors, but nothing too crazy, not a huge sample size for him. But the Red Sox unfortunately lost yet another starting pitcher to injury because Brian Bayo was placed on the IL with lap tightness. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous now. He now joins Lucas Giolito, Nick Pavetta, and Garrett Whitlock as starting pitchers on the IL. I mean, where does it end? Pretty much everybody who was a defined starter at the beginning of the season is now on the IL, except Cutter Crawford and Tanner Houck. I mean, it's getting kind of ridiculous at this point. So he has lat tightness, still need more updates on exactly how long he's going to be out. But to fill his spot, they did call up Zach Kelly. And he also looked good, pitched the two innings, giving up no earned runs and struck out three. He did have a little bit of a lack of control, but overall he was able to get the job done and stayed pretty clean. I could tell that he did have trouble finding the strike zone a couple times, but overall I was happy with what I saw from him. And Zach Kelly somebody who I was very intrigued by because in his short stints in the majors, he was pitching well and he was getting what he needed to get done. And I said, hey, he's somebody who seems reliable, who's just getting the job done. Kind of like Brennan Bernardino, except a lot smaller of a sample size. Brennan Bernardino, to me, was somebody I knew I could rely on and could go out there and get the job done. And he wasn't the best pitcher on the team, but he certainly was one of the most clutch pitchers on the team. And Zach Kelly, I said, he could blossom into a really good piece of this bullpen for the Red Sox. I just need to see more from him. So I'm glad he was able to get an outing in on Wednesday night. The Red Sox were able to start to get a sense of who he is as a pitcher and what he's looking like, and especially because the Red Sox had a big lead in that game, so there wasn't a lot of pressure on him to have to come through and perform under pressure in a big situation. I think that's good. So from the standpoint of circumstances, I think he came in at a time where it was very appropriate for him to come in because if he didn't have it and his command wasn't there and he was starting to walk a lot of guys or was giving up a few runs, then Alex Cora pulls him and brings in somebody else. But there's still a lot of leeway there given that the Red Sox won 8 to nothing. So I like that Alex Cora put him in when he did. Guys like that who don't have as much experience in the majors, you want to make sure that when they are called up at first, that they are not being put into the most high leverage of situations. We've seen that backfire on them before. So I'm happy that Alex Cora took that into account and said, you know, let's just see how this goes. And if it started to get a little bit closer or the Guardians were just putting some runs on the board and he wasn't able to record the outs as effectively, then Alex Cora pulls him and brings in somebody else. But overall, I liked what I saw from him and I liked what I saw from everybody that pitched on Wednesday night. And it's one of those things where Joely Rodriguez, I mean, I still don't trust him. I think he just had an exceptional outing on Wednesday and I think it was a bit of an outlier to be honest I don't think this is how he is as a pitcher I think that was just a performance that happened to be very good but I still don't trust him out there I'm still going to get just as nervous the next time he goes out there as I did on Wednesday night when I saw him walking out to the mound so I'm interested in that situation obviously I want to be wrong I want him to continue to pitch the way that he did on Wednesday and the confidence guy who we saw out there who had great command and was able to just shut down the Guardians hitters. I want to see that guy, but I'm not overly confident that we will moving forward. And I think the Red Sox don't have much of a choice right now 
than to keep him up because of the injuries. But I am sure that once an injured pitcher comes back, he's probably, presumably, one of the first ones on the chopping block at that point to either get sent down to AAA or just get DFA'd. So that'll be interesting to see how that situation plays out with him. But overall, I'm very intrigued by this Red Sox pitching staff. Lots of arms that are contributing in a surprise manner this year that I don't think Red Sox fans expected to contribute. So it's really great to see that. I've been happy to watch this pitching staff so far. They will win games, I'm telling you. If they can continue to put up the pitching numbers that they are, it's going to be tough for teams to beat them because the pitching will keep them in games. Now, obviously, they still need to clean up the defense and the base running mistakes and just understanding the fundamentals of baseball, given that they are at the professional level. But if you take this team overall and what they've done so far this season, considering the fact that Red Sox fans didn't have high expectations for them heading into this year. They're definitely looking pretty good overall. And the fact that they're resilient and pushing through the injuries is absolutely huge. So I love to see that from them. I'm really excited to see what they do moving forward the rest of this season. Hopefully they can win today afternoon game, 1 10 PM first pitch. Hopefully they can win the series and come back home feeling good after a great road stand. So that would be ideal and I would love to see that happen. But as always, keep the faith. Go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.